Hello everyone and welcome back to DiabloCast, your Diablo 3 podcast. Here we keep you up to date on all recent news and events pertaining to Diablo 3. As always, I'm your host, Dennis Force Duhamel, and with me as always is Kevin Six and Carlino. What's going on, guys? And Tyler Cyber Dragon Milnes. I botched <laughs> your name really fast. <laughs> you can say hi though. <laughs> hey, hey guys. Oh man, that's fine though, no big deal. So uh, you know, from what I understand, Tyler, it is quite possible that you may be uh, you know, back back in action on the regular is that true you're almost done school right yeah i have one final to write today and then i am graduated it's a good old college education that i got (laughs) going for me that's great there you go yeah so that's awesome i mean it'd be really good to have you have you back on on a a semi-regular basis and you know we try to we try to shorten those wrap-ups so that these whole things don't take too long. Because uh, for those of you who don't know, there's a lot of like like pre and post stuff that goes on with these podcasts, and sometimes we'll just sit here and talk about crap for two hours. <laughs> we just did. <laughs> like last week, we talked about World of Warcraft and Starcraft Two while we were preparing for our Diablo Three podcast. Yeah, it made a lot of sense. But I mean, this uh, I think this one was a little bit smoother. So, anyways, this week's topics. Let's get right into things here. Uh, we're gonna be making some mention of the auction house. Uh, obviously, something that's been known for a while, but we wanted to take a little a little time to actually go into depth and talk about it also the major uproar amongst the community of course being the fact that you have to be online consistently to play there is no way you can actually play Diablo 3 uh, barring any sort of hacks that may eventually come out Uh, but there's no way you should be normally able to play Diablo 3 unless you have a constant internet connection Uh, obviously a lot of people have had voiced some concerns about this and we'll be making mention of those here and then lastly next week we do have that Gamescom event and at that we will be taking a look at Diablo 3 there's supposed to be a, a playable demo there and then also we may have had some possible hints as to things that may be occurring around that same time. Uh, nobody really knows, but there's definitely something for us to speculate about. So with that said, why don't we go ahead and jump right into the first topic, which will be the auction house. All right, so it's been a few weeks now since the media event took place. And uh, obviously the big bombshell from there being the auction house, also the online only thing. But I would say overall, at least the initial reaction was overwhelmingly, oh my gosh, what is this real money trading auction house? And, you know, there's a lot of sides to it. There's a lot of people who are both for and against it. And in fact, it seems like the community is more or less divided on the matter. Uh, but I do think it's important for us to just discuss it, uh, maybe maybe try to go into a little bit detail about either side of it. And um, again, go over the pros and the cons and try to voice the side of uh, both 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 sides of the community. So uh, let's, I guess we'll just start things off. We made a little bullet point list here. Um, I, I would say that one of the bigger issues that people are concerned with about the auction house is your ability to buy power. The idea, of course, that, you know, without playing, you can go online with your credit card, purchase some items, and all of a sudden you have got the sweetest, sweetest gear in the game. So We'll start with you guys. Uh, Tyler, let me know what you think about the, the aspect of buying power um, and how that could be a negative for any players. Um, I guess the biggest issue is, you know, these people play this game, they put all this time and investment into it to get this gear. I mean, there's people who've played Diablo 2 for years just to get certain gear, and now that's kind of out the window. People just be able to log on, get their character to 60, buy some leak gear, and start doing whatever they want to do without putting too much effort into it, I guess, is what people's concern is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, how about you, Kevin? How do you feel about that uh, that argument against the auction house? I actually don't think that there's anything wrong with it because there's a chance that I may never ever see that person. The great mm-hmm. thing about Diablo 3 is that other people using the auction house won't affect my gameplay whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Sure. I mean, and that would that would certainly be the argument uh, for the auction house to basically counteract people who say, "Oh, you know, you can buy a power." I'm just going to counter all these negative points <laughs> just because well, I don't I, I don't agree with them. I'm yeah, sorry. yeah, no, and that's I mean that's your opinion, and obviously you're you're um you're allowed to have that on this podcast. If you weren't, I would tell you. So, so <laughs> but um, but no, I mean that's a good thing. There's obviously again two sides to this coin, and as I mentioned, uh, as I mentioned from the get go, the the community seems to be fairly divided. I mean, it seems almost right down the middle for every point there's always a counterpoint uh, in the the infinite number of threads that have popped up since uh, this was announced on august 1st so yeah and that's i think that's the thing that that is important to realize though uh, people who have that complaint about buying power is that as kevin mentioned you won't necessarily ever run into these people. I mean, this this is a game that is very as much as uh you know as much as Blizzard is trying to push the co-op, 
you can go through this entire game and just play it all by yourself. Or, you know, if you've got a friend or two, someone from work or a, a friend of yours from school or anything like that who plays, you can just play with them. You aren't required to play with everybody. And th obviously that, that being the big difference between this and, uh, you know, many of the seamless MMOs out there where you are always interacting with the rest of the community, that's not necessarily the case in Diablo. Um, and I would say that, that that would be the major counterpoint to buying power is that, again, you don't, you know, you never even have to know these people exist <laughs> if you don't want to, so. Well, uh, since we're just counterpointing, because I feel the three of us are pretty much on the same page with this, so it's hard for us to kind of say why we don't like it. But another thing about buying the power is there's no more power leveling, at least like there was in Diablo 2, where you have someone, you know, take you to, you know, a higher act, kill a bunch of monsters, and all of a sudden you're, you know, you're level 70 in an hour that doesn't exist in Diablo 3 anymore. So the the weird thing about me with these people who are afraid of people, you know, just buying their way to the top is that they still have to level these characters to 60. Really the only time frame that they're getting rid of is when they're level 60 just grinding out the rest of, you know, whatever they're killing to try to get this better gear. They're still having to play the game though. It's not like you can just jump in and all of a sudden you're level 60. Yeah. Yeah, that's, well, that's true. You could just jump in and use your credit card and purchase a level 60. I mean, we, well, can, we can buy characters, so essentially, yes, you can just buy everything and be a total noob with the game, but still, the chances of me playing with that person are slim to none, especially since I'm only going to be playing, for the most part, with you guys and whatever other friends that I have that play the game. Yeah. So, I mean, and and not to mention, I will never know whether or not they use their credit card or if they actually found the items legitimately. I'll which, never know. Which people actually want a system that allows you to know that. I, I, I've seen mention on the forums of people asking for, <laughs> yeah. can you please put a, uh, a dunce cap on anyone who buys this gear? <laughs> I mean, more or less, that's I what they're looking for. They, they want they want a way to tell if this gear was originally found by this person or if it was purchased through the auction house. And I guess, Kevin, you don't agree with that, as you said. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sorry. But, um, yeah, speaking out of turn, silly me. No, but, uh, it's fine. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I don't really agree with that either because at that point, um, okay, I, I, let me take a step back. I guess, say I'm in a PvP arena match, and I mean, yeah, I guess the thought of them potentially have purchasing their items may be there, but if they're there, I might treat it differently. I guess I don't really know. We'll have to wait and see what happens mm. because I mean, well, I mean, obviously you're not gonna just gonna be a noob because you went and bought stuff. I mean, I'm maybe they come up with van vanity item store, which is so that they might still do. Maybe I'll buy some cool, you know, die for a dollar or two. I don't know, but uh, but I mean, I just I don't think that's right. I pl I would love to use the auction house. I want to sell my items and I want to buy stuff for gold just so I can make some money off of it because I mean that's great. I want to yeah. at least be able to pay back my collector's edition. Yeah. Or pay off it, sorry. I, I but, would say, too, um, in terms of the making money thing, you know, there are people who are talking about, hey, you know, this is going to be a good way to make cash. It's pretty safe to say we're going to be dealing – Maybe maybe the botting won't be as prevalent because of <clears throat> you know any anti hack software, but there certainly will be farmers and you know we we <laughs> I've heard people mention oh you're funding Chinese sweatshops I'm gonna say that that's a little much people do these things people <laughs> do these things voluntarily unless people get like drafted into these into these jobs where they're where they're farming gear online um, for you know 14 hours a day I'm gonna say people go into these voluntarily I could be wrong though maybe maybe I am farming something um, I am uh, promoting something illegal but I'm going to I'm going to say that it's fairly safe to say that the market will be flooded with most items, not the highest end items. The highest end items are still going to be very rare, um, and they'll be the most valuable, but there won't be a lot of them just because they're it'll be so difficult to find them. They're they're the rarest items. Now, most mid to low level arm in, uh, items will be flooded in the market. There there'll be so much of this, and that's going to as a result devalue. I mean, that's how things work. It's supply and demand. The more of something there is, the less valuable it becomes. Um, so when it, when it comes to making money off of this, I'm going to say for the most part, it'll be it'll probably be very subpar in terms of the amount of money that you can actually uh, make back from from selling your stuff. But even, you know, even making a couple of bucks back, hell, even even getting back what you paid for the game, if that eventually happens, what's the that's phenomenal you know what i mean i mean that's that's fantastic if you right. if you eventually if you eventually reach that point people talk about diablo being paid to play if you eventually make enough re, uh, make enough funds enough profit to get back what you purchased then actually diablo's free <laughs> so <laughs> right and i have no problems with that i think that would be awesome i mean yeah. that's at, le at the very least i plan on paying off my collector's edition at yeah. least 
if but, not making money. Yeah, but again, as mentioned, overall, I don't expect people to be making a crazy income. But who knows? It is possible. We'll have to see how the market ends up playing out and how much uh, these items are actually valued uh, but I expect most mid-level items to go for maybe a couple bucks you know and uh, I mean we can look to any of the trading sites for Diablo 2 as reference and you know a majority of the items were relatively cheap it, it was only the rarest of the rare that were, that were of any significant value it's going to be the same case here um, for Diablo 3 so so yeah, pretty interesting stuff. Um, I think that one of the next big points to with towards the cons of the auction house system is going to be uh, the idea of this devaluing the gameplay. Now we mentioned um, in terms of buying power, the frustration for players there is that I'm putting all this time into the game, um, is this hobby of mine that I love. Someone comes along and they and they purchase the gear. This makes it maybe a little more shallow and I actually heard someone this was a very interesting point someone arguing against it because they know they're going to purchase gear and then the game will be boring to them. And I, I, that's an so. interesting no I know I know just just hold it that's that's a very interesting point but at least he knows himself well enough to say okay I'm I'm a compulsive person in that I am going to purchase all the high end gear and then, since I won't have anything to do, since I'll have the best of the best, unless I want to farm more gear to try to make some extra money off of it, all of a sudden the game becomes sucky. Because for the most part, that's what Diablo is. Diablo is playing to, to get gear. You play, you play, you play, you get more gear. But if you can just purchase this gear, then people are saying, hey, now there's no reason to play. Um, I guess for people who say that as a counterpoint, since that's kind of what we're doing since we don't have a lot of these cons ourselves but <laughs> a lot of people are saying you know devaluate the game like why play it when i can just pay my way up but at the same time someone has to play the game to get those items on there yeah even, even right. the characters like you said yeah i can go in and buy a level 60 character now somebody has to play and get that character to level 60 so for the market that's really looking to buy their way up to the top sure it devaluates the game but i guess on the other hand it actually raises the value of the game for other players so that they have a reason to keep playing the game i mean if six years down the road you know a lot of people are getting bored or whatever because nothing's changed but there could be a chance where i'll, I'll still play because i want to level up a level 60 character and i can sell them to someone who wants to bother their way to the top you know and yeah that'll yeah. give me a reason to play it'll add value to the game for me yeah that's that's a good point i suppose i just i don't know i i think i argued with somebody and he was telling me i can't buy the game because um it makes more money for me to play this than World of Warcraft. Like, what? It, 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 it loses him money is what he was telling me. And I was like, okay, well, just ignore the fact that there's an auction house. And he tells me, <laughs> okay, but there is an auction house. I can't ignore that. And every minute I'm not playing Diablo 3, I'm losing money. I'm like, no, you're, you're just losing the potential to make money. You're not actually losing cash. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's I, that's, I, I that's very interesting. The, all the 15-year-olds stealing their parents' credit cards to buy their way to their top and having... $150 charges from Blizzard on there. It's going to be pretty absurd. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, 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 it's certainly, I mean, overall, obviously the, the concept is interesting. In terms of devaluing the gameplay, it's very safe to say that something like this is on an individual basis. In fact, just the way Diablo is structured, as we mentioned prior, most of these issues are on an individual basis. You don't have to encounter these people. The argument to that is, well, PvP, I am encountering these people, and if they had purchased gear, they have the edge on me. And this is actually something that I argued a little bit in the last podcast, and it slipped my mind at the moment, but people, those loving trolls, leaving the comments, informed me <laughs> of my mistake, and they told me, well, you know what? The, the matchmaking system will pitch you against people of your equal gear level so if you purchase gear you'll be against other people who have maybe that high gear either through purchasing it or through actually legitimately playing the game so either way you will eventually be matched up um, even and I guess it makes sense to a point but still in these particular matchups anyone who has the the better gear does have the edge that's the facts that's this is an RPG gear is very determinant as to uh, who prevails in fights uh, obviously it, I would say it's um, not better it's not more so than skill itself but it, it, it certainly plays a role uh, so in PvP yes that is that is a legitimate argument that buying someone purchasing this gear gives them the advantage. But then we have to go back to let's let's look at PvP in Diablo 3. It's not competitive. And it sucks. It burns for me to say that. My soul <laughs> my soul is a fire right now. I, I, I want Diablo 3 to be PV, to the competitive PvP. I want that to be an aspect of it, but it's not. Um, so it's to them maybe it's not a big deal. It's not a deciding factor. So um I, I would say that they have an edge and not that it, not that they have the edge. Um, yeah, having gear is going to be one of the 
biggest, um, I guess, variables there. But, I mean, not only will your build matter, but your... I don't know. Because, okay, on top of gear, you can also enchant it. You can uh, put gems in the sockets. You can do whatever you want. And then the whole rune system with the skills and, and whatnot. Yeah, but all that stuff's purchasable, too. I mean, we're, 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 lumming up, we're summing up gear as to anything purchasable through the auction house. So all right. that stuff can and be And if acquired. they make a battle mage and you have a barbarian that is not something silly then i mean <laughs> there's no reason why you wouldn't be able to 1v1 melee pvp a freaking mage no or a wizard yeah i mean sure this is you know i mean certainly that argument we could go back and forth all day because this is <laughs> this is an rpg and, and and by its nature it's rock paper scissors right but let, let's let's make it an even matchup and let's have a battle mage versus a battle mage the person who purchased the better gear has the edge barring that the skills is equal that is that not correct I mean, yeah, assuming both players are not noobs, you know, yeah. I mean, <laughs> so, I mean, that's the argument. But again, that brings us back to the point of they're not pushing PVP competitively, at least now, hopefully in the future. Again, my, my soul is burning, but hopefully in the future, <laughs> it, it'll be a, a part of it. But right now it's not. So, well, I think other people need to realize, too, that the matchmaking for PvP is not solely based on gear. It's not like your gear has rank. True. That gives you your absolute number, and you're only faced with those people with light gear. I'm pretty sure There's... it's part of the equation, but it's well, not Well, yeah, yeah, yet. but I'm saying if, if, someone, if a noob buys their way all the way to the top, buys a level 60 character, buys the best gear, buys all their enchantments, you know, and everything, they and play a couple smashed. of games with someone who, who played the game, you know, hundreds of hours to get there, who have that much more experience. They're going to get smashed a hundred oh, yeah. times in a row, and then they're just going to drop in their rank, and they're going to not be paired up with you anymore. If you have the yep. skill, you're going to beat them. It's going to lower them, and you you won't have to fight them again. Yeah. Oh, That's yeah. true. That's definitely the case. And, and again, in an RPG, there are so many variables. There, there's the there's going to be the team makeup and the and the skill makeup and all of these things that are going to be a big factor in it as well, aside from the gear. So yes, the gear isn't the biggest thing. Uh, certainly, certainly agreeing with you on that. But again, it's it's part of the equation. It's part of the it def, it's definitely factored in there somewhat. So. Because trust me, I'll I'll have a top end level sixty from all my PVE, and I'll play PVP, and I will not be playing people who are very good <laughs> yeah uh, it's 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 definitely an interesting argument and again there's so many there are so many sides to this coin uh let's move on to the next big bull point about auction house uh, people upset that this is being turned into a cash cow uh a la world of warcraft for blizzard entertainment this is just another method for them to pull in a, absurd amounts of money and obviously in this, we're referencing all of the transaction fees. There's the posting fee, the sales fee, and then the withdrawal fee. There are three major fees. I use major in terms of those are the those are where the fees are coming out of, not in their actual value. Because as as far as we were informed during the uh, media event, these fees will be fairly nominal, and it won't really be anything to sweat lose sweat lose sleep over lose sweat over why would you lose sweat over anything i, I don't know i don't know what's going on so <laughs> so l let's talk about that fact uh blizzard making money off this is this a good thing tyler or is this an issue um from my perspective it's a good thing i mean yeah. the company that i've grown to love for their video games is getting more money to make more video games so i don't really have a problem with it yep and uh, how about you kevin yeah, I mean, I'm I'm kind of right there with Tyler. I mean, the, the the small amount of money that they're going to be taking, I guess I don't really have a problem with because I would much prefer that it go to Blizzard as opposed to some third party, you know, sketchy little website like they were talking about, which is where it would end up eventually. Yeah. Um, but in the end, Blizzard isn't. I mean, yeah, I guess they probably did that. So, I guess part of them were like, yeah, let's make some money off of this. But I I don't know. I really don't feel that way. Yes, they're gonna be making a bit of money. But if they really, really wanted to suck it dry, they would make it percentage-based. That way, all the top-end gear that gets sold, now they're making a ton of more money instead of the whatever nominal fee is what they're saying. Mm -hmm. So that's number one. And number two, what was my number two? Nobody knows. <laughs> uh, well, I guess I, I only have number one. I don't really remember. All right. Well, there you go. Kevin's one point. <laughs> so, so <laughs> no, I mean, one cent. <laughs> so that that's and I I would say that's true. Um, people will say, well, they're still gonna get you know they're still gonna get extra income from this. And yes, okay, that's that's true. They're making a good game though, so that's that's part of it. Ooh, I remember number two. Can I say it? So then my number two was actually. The whole reason behind them adding a fee to it was to keep the crappy items off the auction house so that way only decent 
or somewhat decent items get sold. You know, because I I wouldn't want to just join the game and then have. Well, I mean, I guess I would if I'm selling it, but I don't know. Let's <laughs> say I put a bunch of like horrible level one items up there for five bucks and just flood the auction house with them and then some brand new player jumps in the game and says hey there's a ton of these maybe i should buy one so yeah. then buys one and just wastes five dollars yeah and, and that's a good point that definitely um with a flat fee that's exactly what it'll, it will do it will prevent the lower end items from from ever flooding the market i would say even initially once the game starts i guarantee this the second the game starts people are going to just farm and and sell, try to sell everything but as long as you use your brain you're like okay i'm not gonna buy this crap because if i play for another two hours i will be getting gear that far surpasses any of this so um that that certainly makes a big difference now again back to it it, it is i would say overall it's a good thing because although they, they probably will be making more money off this that isn't going to be invested, that ends up going to people's paychecks, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing if these people are putting in the time and effort and they're working hard. I'm not sure if I said this last podcast or if I just thought it in my head, but if you're working very hard at any job, anything that you do, it's not absurd to think that your income should increase somewhat to coincide with that. That's nothing that's that's a ridiculous thought. I don't know if you guys disagree with that, but... Well, not that I have this opinion, but I know others, I've read other people who do that, yeah, that's true, if you work harder, you should get more money, but they're, you know, according to them, they're not working harder, the players are doing all the work, selling all the items, and they're just sitting there collecting the money from it. The, yeah, this has to come from somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, yeah. This, I mean, this actual, this, <laughs> the actual transaction is, um, it doesn't require any in investment except for the initial upfront cost but we're, we're thinking all everything that went up to that is that the hard work that they put again i mean how long has diablo 3 been in development <laughs> that's just, true just like 10 years that or was, something stupid that wasn't my opinion <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want people to think i'm I, you're gonna I be shunned you will be uh, shunned god like tyler just trying to represent all those people who want to complain about it. There you <laughs> well, go. Someone's got to be the voice of the angry. So, um, <laughs> all right. So, I, I mean, those are most of the major bullet points. And I, well, this is one of those things where I'm certain. Is there anything else big about the auction house that you guys, uh, that you guys can think of? Because I'm sure we'll hear about it in the comments, regardless. But oh, I guess, I guess one more thing. Um, and you guys can maybe mull over any additional points about the auction house that we may have missed. But I would say the one of the big things that. It seems like I guess it seems like a legitimate concern. And being uh, step taking a step back and looking at the industry, looking at gaming, and this is something that I feel like you know a lot of people who make arguments for or against this don't really consider. Um, it, and that's fine. Not everyone's involved in the gaming industry and knows what's going on elsewhere. They just like their games. They want to play them, and they want Diablo three to be the way they envisioned it. But if we look at the industry, we, we've talked about in the past how microtransactions have have been pretty prevalent, um, especially as of the last few years. And again, we've talked about uh, those online games with downloadable content, being able to purchase additional items, vanity or otherwise, uh, any of the free to play models that are out there. And, and, you know, Lord knows there's plenty of them. There's lots and lots of free to play games available where you purchase gear or something akin to it, um, purchase in game points, or, or I guess that'd be like the in game currency to buy things in the game. But Taking a step back and looking in the industry, people are saying that this specific part of, you know, taking money from the consumer in in even if it's in this this nominal fee is kind of opening the floodgates uh, to to future things. And and fr and looking out in, it's like, well, I guess that's kind of true because if this is if this is going to be a trend setting thing here that Blizzard's doing in this specific type of thing. Um, people are concerned about that being a major a major issue because it's going to be prevalent in all sorts of games uh kevin or tyler either of you want to jump in on that how you feel about that well i i think i had mentioned this earlier i don't know if i did or not but uh i really feel that, you know they're making this new mmo that's going to be free to play and i feel maybe this is where they got that idea from maybe they're going to add are this we talking about titan right now yeah yeah, yeah. okay you know, and this is just one way that they're they're kind of segueing that and finding into it. <laughs> a way to, and you know, finding a way to make it free to play so that you know they can have a lot of people playing it without making people pay mm -hmm. a monthly subscription. So, if they can make any sort of income from this with Diablo three, then hopefully they'll implement it into Titan, and that's how they'll help pay for it. 
that right true. there is going to make and, people angry, though. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> and, I mean, D- that D- has... D- Diablo fans will be all, well, why are they investing this Diablo money <laughs> into this other game? But that's part of the company, I guess. Uh, how dare they test their own products on their own products? <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, which is another reason why I don't really like when people complain about how we, you know things get compared to World of Warcraft, because... All they're doing is taking their own ideas from their own game and putting them in another one of their own games because it was a good idea to begin with. Yeah. Nobody has anything to say about that, but okay. No, no, that's that's true. That is true. I mean, that's uh, that's how it works, right? You you learn from you know mistakes in the past or whatever lessons you learned um, in one game and incorporate it into another game. That's how things evolve and become better. Just exactly. In any, in it's anything, not like so. it's not like Diablo Three is just going to be completely original and everything. They're just going to completely make up right on the spot just for Diablo Three. I mean, st- it's not like this is the first time we've ever heard of a mage or a wizard <laughs> or it a is. barbarian. It is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> so. But uh, but. But yeah, from what I know about Titan, it's supposedly supposed to be more social. So I mean, I don't know. I kind of like what Tyler's. I, I like Tyler's line of thinking. I mean, more social, player-driven economy, completely player-driven economy. That I, that to me sounds more social. Mm. But yeah, I mean, I, I'm a, I'm kind of agreeing with him. I I really don't think that it it won't be pay to play. Although I guess it's possible. But yeah, I mean, it's it's something interesting to think about. Yeah. So yeah, it, it, it's it's just overall. Again, two sides of the coin. There's a, there's a there's a pretty heated divide um, between both sides of the community, and um, well, let us know in the comments below what you think uh, about the auction house and and its implementation. Maybe if any of our points or counterpoints swayed you from one direction to the other, maybe you were you know maybe you were for the auction house and now you're against it. That's great. Again, your opinion. You are welcome to have them. Um, so we'll wrap that up, I suppose, for now, and go on to the next major topic, which is going to be online only. So Diablo 3, online only. There you go. That's it. Uh, (laughs) It's going to require internet access to be able to play the game. So if you have shoddy internet, if you have no internet, if you are in any particular situation... uh, Lots of my friends during college, they had, they, you know, who went to different schools, they they went places that had terrible connection. Um, and, you know, I live I live on the East Coast. I'm very near the mountains, and I had some friends who went to school. Um, I know Plymouth State University in New Hampshire. It just really had bad internet, and they weren't able to play um, any of those online games. And that's going to be a problem for kids like people like that. And then again, if you happen to live in any parts of the world that don't have internet, well, number one, I don't know how you're listening to this, but <laughs> but but two, there 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 is a lot. There's a lot of the world that doesn't have broadband. So people are arguing that, you know, they're really cutting back on their potential player base. Um, Now, before we get into the major points of the online only system, either of you want to chime in to anything I just mentioned? Uh, I mean, I'm online the whole time, so I don't really see the problem. Are you online right now? I I am right now. Actually, (laughs) That's how we're talking. So very interesting. The interwebs. Very, very interesting. It's a series of tubes. Did you know that? Yeah. (laughs) I mean, I, I Someone's get that there get are that some areas that don't, but I feel 95%. Am I maybe too high on that? But I feel well, like 100 or no, let's say 93.7% of people just make up percentages right there on the spot. <laughs> well, well, let's say this. There, there is a, there obviously, you know, talking about the surface area of the world. Sure. There's a lot of areas without broadband internet. People have, uh, people have different, you know, different things, but that most of those people probably don't have a computer and probably aren't interested in playing Diablo three as well. <laughs> now with that aside, cause I don't, you know, I'm not looking to offend anybody here. Uh, that's not my, that's not my gig, but there, there will, there certainly will be a, a portion, a segment of the player base who has a computer, who loves video games, who played Diablo two and wants to play Diablo three. Um, but they either can't afford internet or they just don't have access to it. They move to a place that doesn't have it for their job or whatever. Uh, here's a great example. People in the, ar- in the armed forces, you know, overseas, there's a, there'll be a lot of situations where they don't have internet access. And there is downtime. And, you know, um, obviously they're very busy and they're, they're, they're doing their job over there. But there is time and they would like to play these games. But without proper internet access, they won't be able to. So there, there there's definitely a, a, a large maybe not large in the sense of the actual number, but there is a, a part of the player base that, that won't have this access and it, it, it does affect them. Can we at least agree on that? <laughs> yes, <laughs> definitely. And, and not to mention there's also the aspect of, Hey, you know, I'm on a six hour plane ride and I just want to pop in my laptop and play some Diablo three. 
which I guess if you went and purchased internet from the plane, I guess you could. Do I, was, it. I was just gonna say I heard that <laughs> argument a bunch, and I was like, I was just on the plane and uh, I had internet, so. Yeah, okay, so whatever. <laughs> but for the most part, you're not gonna have internet on an airplane because it's something like twenty bucks an hour, isn't it? Ridiculous like that. Yeah, they they do charge you a, a fee for it, but but y- yeah, I know we're definitely we're definitely in agreement in the sense that this will affect some people. Now that's gonna that's gonna bring us back to let's take let's try to think of Blizzard's perspective here. There are there's obviously whatever you're doing, whatever decisions you make, there's a cost benefit. You're trying to figure out okay, is this worth what we're going to lose as a result of this decision? Um, you know, implementing the auction house is it worth the ragers that are not going to buy the game? Obviously, they decided yes. Uh, online only is it worth <laughs> the amount of people who won't purchase the game because they don't have good internet? Obviously, their decision was yes. So we'll have to think about why. Uh, so one of the major reasons behind online only, it, it's going to help deal with any botters. Um, constant forcing constant internet access allows them to, you know, maybe I guess we'll call it check up on your computer and see if you're running any background programs or however w- however Warden works. I really yes. don't know. Um, this isn't something that I've looked into much. I think you know a thing or yeah. two about it, Kevin. But um, forcing people to be online allows warden to do its job and check if there's any bots running the other thing is duping and this is one of the biggest things uh, being able to to use hacks that this deals with it because the what what is it it's the it's everything is going to be on blizzard's clients is that correct tyler is that how it works yeah their basically servers. your games run off of their servers just like world of warcraft where you don't actually have the game files just on like your computer diablo 2 okay warcraft world of warcraft whatever yeah but um, but right. So not not only duping, but completely hacking your character. If we were allowed to take our characters offline and then bring them back online, we could hack our character via whatever saved data is on our computer, yeah. and then Blizzard would read that file, and then there would be no way for them to know whether or not we hacked. And sure. then I thought, okay, what they could do is just make an image of our character whenever we log off, and then restore that image when we log back in. So it would allow us to play. But then if we actually played offline, any of that stuff we found wouldn't be would they would just be gone hmm. now that, that, that's interesting i mean i thought it was i thought it, it wasn't a bad idea but for the people that are going to complain and say okay well i did this this and this offline blizzard will say well we don't know whether or not you hacked it and if yeah. you did hack it all you could say was well i played and found all this stuff and you don't know i didn't do that hmm. which i'm guessing is why they decided to just completely choose to not allow offline play whatsoever um, so now they don't have to worry about people hacking their characters, bringing them online. Now they don't have to worry about having two different sets of characters, which is what Diablo 2 was. It was a, a closed battle net and an open, open battle net. And the open battle net characters, you could um, play it single player while offline, which was cool. But then there were the people that complained and said, okay, well, I didn't know that you couldn't play these characters online. And I just made a character. He's level 30 now. And I have to restart completely to get back on battle net, which, which is, isn't a great system. I'm not going to lie. I mean, yes, it's cool because we can play offline, but it's, I mean, it's not a great system just because of that whole, I have to restart now and have two different sets of characters. Hmm. So, I mean, a, a, that's the reasoning behind that. At least that's how I feel. I saw yeah. some people bringing up digital rights management and the whole pirating and cracking the game. I don't agree with that whatsoever. I mean, the game's going to be cracked regardless. StarCraft II was cracked during the beta. People made a created an offline version during the beta. Um, people are going to have their own private servers eventually. So I, I've seen a couple pop up for StarCraft 2. I, I mean, granted, they're not like full blown StarCraft 2 private servers. They're just, they basically hacked like portions of the client to make it run like a server and whatnot. So, I mean, it's not, it's not done well. It's just, you know, a hacky job. But, I mean, the point is that it's there. It took about a year. But, I mean, it'll be there eventually, regardless of whether or not we have the ability to play offline. Somebody will figure out a way to make it play offline. I'm just. Just throwing that out there. Yeah. Not that I'm condoning it. I'm just saying it'll happen. So um, something I did want to mention, too, you went off on on your tangent, which was all well and good, but um, when you specifically talked about you know, preventing the duping, just to, to clarify for people who may not understand how it works, with, with things being with a majority of the game's assets not being on our computer but instead on the Blizzard servers, this means we physically don't have access to those files to be able to recreate them, what's kind of known as duping, uh, making double of an item or just making things uh, you know, appear out of nowhere uh, because you have the, basically the set line of code to make that happen. So that information, you know, when we install a game, isn't physically on our PC. It's all on, it's all on the Blizzard server. So that's, that's specifically what forcing online-only play prevents us from being able to do. 
the game assets, that will be on our computer. So we will be able to data mine the game, find out all quest information, all item information, hero information, stats, formulas, everything. Every little thing about the game we'll be able to data mine. Not that I'm going to, but it's going to be possible. <laughs> <laughs> what won't be on our computer is the game, is the, our character save files. And then this yeah. is where... This is where that comes in because eventually someone will come along, um, reverse engineer the save file, figure out what all um, all the information in the save file means, and then be able to just um, give themselves items, create fake items and, and whatnot. So, yeah, I mean, I was just a little clarification correction right there. Sure, yeah, clarifying my clarification. Exactly. So, so um, and then and then an argument you know I've seen people come up with to that is that well you know. We look at Diablo 2, as you talked about, Kevin, the single player. You could just make a single player character. Why not have that? And the reason is, as Kevin said, because Blizzard felt like, you know, on top of these issues, now realize this, is, this isn't this is just one thing. It's not just this aspect or that aspect. It's all these things combined. So everything we just talked about, the duping and stuff, and trying to prevent or at least delay uh, the hacking of the game, which, again, it'll likely happen eventually, um, but, but trying to help combat that a little bit. It's also the fact that they didn't like the aspect that people were having these these two two separate sets of characters. They want you to have just one set of characters. This is my barbarian. I you know I can play him single player, which is just online by myself, or I can play co op with friends online. But I don't have uh, my my single player barbarian offline and my online barbarian. There's there's no distinction between the two, and that and that's specifically the thing um, that. You know, they, they've decided on top of everything else that they don't want there to be two sets of characters, essentially. So, so yeah, pretty pretty interesting. And again, it's obviously a frustrating situation for, for people who do not hack and who do, don't dupe and they play legitimately, but they just don't have internet access. Um, and unfortunately, that's a decision that Blizzard has just made. And this is, again, one of those kind of trends of the industry. Uh, what was, I believe, Assassin's Creed uh, was a game that was much in the same vein. I mean, Assassin's Creed is, was uh, was almost like entirely single player focused. They added a multiplayer in one of the expansions, I believe. It's not a game that I ever got uh, heavily involved with. But overall, it's a single player game and you had to be online to play it. And th- this was the same uproar that that community came up with. They're like, what the F? Um, but this is just kind of what's happening uh, for, for various reasons reasons so and that game was even less affected because here's the other thing too if they allow us again we they don't want two sets of characters if they allow us to take our characters offline then the duping becomes possible as we talked about in depth and then you take those dupe items you go online and you sell them for real money that's a problem right <laughs> I mean, and, I, and i'm assuming that's where the big thing is i mean obviously they don't want hacking your character they don't want to be able to allow people to cheat to begin with but i mean it's even more of an issue because of the auction house yeah, I mean that that's a huge and that would be that would be like fraud charges. That would be big right. big problems because you're 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 making your material item materializing items out of nothing which are supposed to be found inside of the game itself and then you're selling it for real world money. I mean, that would be a major issue and obviously as Kevin just mentioned, that's probably a big deciding factor into them saying this is a headache we don't even want to deal with because this would just be that there would just be too many issues behind this. And so and that in mind Blizzard or Jay Wilson had told us that Blizzard will never be putting up um, they'll never create their items and put it on the auction house just for the sake of having it in the auction house. They want it to be completely player driven. So Blizzard won't be just materializing items like Dennis was just saying. Mm. So yeah, just yeah. tossing that out there too. And there's, you know, there's people in the community with their tinfoil hats saying, well, since there's no, <laughs> since there's no names attached to these, how do we know that that's happening? Uh, yeah, um, I'm sure. Well, I, 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 all no. I can do to that is uh, shrug because I don't know. <laughs> right. I don't know. Uh, we have to, we have to uh, take them on their word, I suppose. And that, but this is the kind of thing, you know, if that ever were to happen that, and it were ever discovered, then that would be a major headache for oh, right. entertainment. And, and so. why would they want to cause themselves a headache over five dollars, ten dollars, <laughs> when they're a multi-billion-dollar company? Exactly. Exactly. So, all right. So there we go. Uh, in-depth discussion about online only. Much like with the auction house topic, please let us know below. One of those uh, additional heated debates. What you guys feel about what we talked about? Why? How you're required to be online, and and maybe how it it's going to affect you as a player. Uh, let's move over to the next topic. This one one's not going to be quite as big. Just kind of making mention of the upcoming Gamescom event. All right, so Gamescom is next week. Diablo 3 is making a showing. We have had some recent updates. Uh, Tyler, you haven't talked in a while, so why don't you take this one away, huh? Let, uh, him, know what, let him know what's going on <laughs> at Gamescom. Clears his throat. <laughs> uh, basically, Gamescom is next weekend. Uh, Blizzard's going to be there. 
At first, we didn't hear anything about Diablo, but they changed that when they said that there was going to be a playable demo, which was the 2010 BlizzCon demo. Um, today, they actually released their schedule of events while they're at Gamescom. For us here with Diablo, there will be an entire interview with Jay Wilson the, uh, and Diablo 3. There's also two other segments just labeled Diablo Performance. We don't exactly know what they plan on doing during that time, but they do have time scheduled just for that. And as a side note, it was disclaimered at the bottom, and I'll quote here. As a side note, any rumors you may have heard about a gate to Diablo's Burning Hell's opening in Cologne are completely unfounded. Seriously, nothing is happening at Rudolf Platz from the evening of August 16th, especially nothing to do with demonic invasions. <laughs> I call shenanigans on that. Like, why would, you, why would you even say that if you don't want... I don't know. That's just me, I guess. They're just stirring the pot. Right. It's like, it's like yeah, there will be nothing going on than the, at, you know, 537, August 16th. Um, especially not a ban announcement, so don't even think about it. I don't know. I feel like they're drawing attention to something that didn't need attention being drawn to. That's my personal opinion. If that's not the case. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll play devil's advocate here, then, and say maybe Bring they it. actually added that disclaimer to stop people from saying beta is going to be announced in and then have this and huge <laughs> up or when it's not announced. Yeah, but when has Blizzard ever done anything like that? It's the first time for everything, Kevin. Hey, you know. Look at the I, conference I, call. Everyone was, everyone was upset that beta wasn't announced. and That's because maybe they they're did sick that of one. Maybe they're sick of people saying, hey, they're going to announce beta during here. And then All they, right, what's stopping you from saying, hey, they're going to announce beta on August 16th from their headquarters instead of at Gamescom? Hmm. Nothing. I don't know. It's I, I didn't honestly, say anything about headquarters. Come on. I don't. I don't expect it. And this is probably the first time that something's been been like you know hinted slightly even. Um, and I haven't jumped on it and said, "Ooh, this might be the beta." I I just I'm you know I'm giving up on <laughs> I'm giving up on that. I mean, we we know it's going to be out within the next few weeks. Um, they 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 keep reiterating that they're still planning to release it before the end of September. So uh, we're coming up on near near midway through August now. So we've got about a month and a half left. So in sometime within the next, you know, sometime within the next two to six weeks, we'll be seeing a beta announcement. So if it's next week, great. If not, whatever. <laughs> I can, I can it's wait. Maybe sometime soon, within the next month and a half, is it now? Yeah, month and a half. So it's coming. Um, but maybe I don't know. Maybe maybe this is a hint towards it. We'll see on August sixteenth. I'm not gonna, I'm not holding my breath until then. I would well, die. So seven weeks until September thirtieth from tomorrow. Yeah. But um, so. just to add to that, that doesn't mean that they're not gonna say anything with Diablo. Oh, obviously they will. Yeah, the Diablo's going to be there. So I just what want people to realize that it's not, they're not saying that they're not, you know, saying anything new about Diablo, just not to expect anything too huge is, I guess, their disclaimer. But yeah. I feel that they're still going to hopefully announce something new to us that we can get excited about. Maybe a guild system? That'd be huge. Because then it affects StarCraft 2 also. Mm. Inferno? I would like to hear about that. Possibly yeah, that, that'd be nice too. That'd be nice too. All right, awesome. Well, uh, there you go. So that's the in information on Gamescom uh, next week. I think we'll be right in the midst of the event. Maybe we might have something to talk about. Uh, maybe if something's shown on the first or second day, we'll be able to discuss it in the podcast. Uh, but either way, stay tuned for some updates next week about Gamescom. And with that said, let's go ahead and jump into this week's poll. All right, so before we go into this week's poll, let me wrap up last week's poll. Last week, we wanted to know what variation of the auction house you would prefer to use. We, of course, have the real money auction house, gold-based auction house, using both or won't use any at all. Uh, looks like coming out in number one with 65% of your votes was we'll use both. So many of you saying, I'll be using the gold as well as the real money auction house. I think something that will be really interesting to see is how the two play off of each other, um, you know, purchasing things in the gold auction house with in-game gold and then selling it on the real money auction house. This is something that will take place. Uh, second place was the gold base auction house third place was just using the real money auction house and then lastly won't use the auction house at all so that's last week's poll and tyler why don't you go into this week's poll for this week at comic-con which was held a couple weeks ago actually july 21st to the 24th jinx showcased a couple new diablo 3 <laughs> items that they will be having for sale which i'm excited about because there's very little diablo merchandise right now that exists hmm but basically, we want to know which you think is the coolest, which one you plan on buying. Uh, what we know right now is they have a, uh, a belt with a Diablo skull on it, real rugged looking. Uh, Mistress of Pain socks for the ladies who like to play and kill demons. We have a Demon Hunter coat and a Tyrael hoodie. 
that's that's it. That's that. So go ahead and head on over to DiabloFans.com and uh, make sure you log in and you can vote for this week's poll. All right, so now we're going to be going to user questions, and these, of course, will be left on uh, Facebook, either the Four Strategy Facebook or uh, the one for Diablo fans. Do you guys know what the what, would they just search Diablo fans on Facebook to find that? Yeah, it's just Diablo fans. Yep, that'll do it. All right, so uh, we're just going to be taking a couple of questions. The first question that I have here comes from David. David says, hey, Force, uh, Blizzard announced that they're still re- pushing to release the game this year. Uh, with that said, uh, when do you think an expansion will be expected? And he says, I know it's a bit early to throw out a date um, for a possible expansion, but he just wants to know kind of a general bar- ballpark. Well, you know, based on Blizzard's uh, history as of, yet, uh, as of late, they seem to be on a cycle. I believe it's, what is it, about a year and a half in yeah. between expansions? expansions yep. um that's what they've been doing for world of warcraft so i would expect that for diablo 3 as well with that said i don't expect nearly as many expansions for diablo 3 as there were for world of warcraft uh, world of warcraft being an mmo in in and of its nature it's forced to be constantly evolving with a game like diablo i don't expect there, there to be as much um post the initial release now, after saying that, I'll also go back to, you know, we've got the Real Money Auction House now. This is an additional uh, revenue stream for Blizzard. So it certainly is possible that they will be supporting the, the game and additional expansions much more than they may have in the past for that very reason. Um, so, yeah, I'm thinking about a year and a half is when we can expect after yep. the release of Diablo 3 to see an expansion. I was going to say 18 months. So Yeah, so... So there you go. All right, so I'm going to grab another question. This one from Kyle asking, um, compared compared to the Duster Duck, and you know what that was. Cluster <laughs> Duck, I think you yeah, said. Yeah, something like that. I don't know. I can't. I it's should. a CL, buddy. But it looks like a D. It's definitely not a, yeah, it looks like a D. Okay, Cluster Duck. <laughs> loot <laughs> grab. Uh, the D1 and D2 were, how do you feel that the only for you loot system in Diablo 3 is? Also, alongside the general looting system, do you think that there will be global loot uh, that drops visible to all players? I know when playing with friends that if they get something awesome, a pole arm and spear arm, and they like to share it with me, uh, now with personalized loot, will an, an, uh, will an item that is awesome for one member of your group drop for another so the answer is no uh diablo 3 the loot is randomized and now on an individual basis so what that is going to mean is that you can have um an item is going to drop and you will be the only person who see it if basically if you see an item on the ground that dropped off a off of a mob off of any monster in the game you're the only person who can see it now with that said if you pick it up and then drop it on the ground then the rest of your team can see it but that's that's it as far as i'm concerned right now that's that's the way the loot system set up um, just to add on that real quick for people who are concerned about, you know, never knowing what other people are picking up and stuff like that, there is, uh, item linking through chat, so that way if you're playing with a group of friends and you don't know, you know, what gear they need or what they have and what you picked up, you can easily just link that item in chat and people will be able to see it a lot easier and you can share those items a lot easier. Mm. Same with, uh, trading too, actually, I believe. You just click on the portrait if they're in your game and it brings up a trade window so you don't even necessarily have to be your... <laughs> Oh, cyber oh, dragon! Damn you, dogs! <laughs> so, 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 someone may say, someone may say, well, what if I, what if I'm playing with jerks and they, uh, you know, they don't show me what drops that would be good for me? Don't play with jerks. Like, why aren't you playing with your friends? If you don't have any friends, play by yourself. I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> and with that, it's not like you're losing out on the loot. You're still getting your own loot. It's yeah. really just you being, you know, I want to know what everybody's getting because I want equal opportunity for it. When really, you get your own fair share of loot. So stop being greedy. And if they're withholding gear from you, just do it right back to them. You see a super sweet axe that drops for a barbarian in your group, and and you think they held on to a staff for you, but don't show them the yeah. axe. And then sell, sell it on sell the, it the auction house. And make That's $100. right. Dollars. Baller. <laughs> All right, um, uh, Kevin, you want to get some uh, get some of those questions answered? Actually, yeah, I saw the one. It was I'm probably gonna butcher his name, although it kind of looks like it. it. Says it's from Georgios, and it says, "Would you rather be a wizard or a demon hunter, and why?" And I would have to say that I would much prefer to be a wizard because I think. Knowing, like, how to shoot stuff out of my hands would be awesome. And then if you're talking about in the game, I'd also prefer to be a wizard just because oh, they're kind of cool. Man. Oh, man. I've been wanting to do me. that one for minutes. Do, oh, you have minutes. A, do you have a legitimate question, Kevin? Okay, yes, yes. Well, actually, then there was another one asking why he looks like a barbarian in real life. <laughs> I didn't do that one. Um, Julian wants to know, is there going to be a toggle or run-walk button, or can we only run? And I believe the answer to that is that we can only run. Mm-hmm. Tyler, anything to add to that? Um, yes, it is just the one, the one speed. No more walking in town. That's what I thought. And then you just da- run past them. Yeah, exactly. Like like the Olympics. They could do okay. that. A race in PvP mode. There you go. <laughs> oh, 
You guys are trying way too hard. Tyler, okay. get questions? I got one more. Get out of here. <laughs> All right, fine. Darren wants to know uh, if we care to speculate on any of the system specs based on what we already know. And I'm going to tell you everything, or the same thing that I've been telling everybody else. <laughs> yes, yeah, bark, 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 bark. <laughs> no, but uh, if, if basically if you can run StarCraft II or World of Warcraft, uh, you know, with uh, a decent rate, then you'll be able to run Diablo three just fine. Mm. And now, dog dragon, yeah. cyber dog dragon. Oh, yeah. Well, for, first it? I apologize for the dog barking, but for anybody who sees my avatar on defense, now you yes. can put a voice to the to the picture. <laughs> so I know you guys have been dying to know what that dog sounds like. <laughs> But uh, uh, questions. I'm, I'm going to choose this guy, mainly because I just want to say his name is Meester. Meester <laughs> Joseph uh, wants to know if the Demon Hunter will have a summon like the Valkyrie did, or the Valkyrie in Diablo 2. And this was something I'm actually really interested in because I want to play Demon Hunter. And for me, playing any range, a big part of that is having some distractions to keep your distance. So I've actually been dying to know if there's some sort of summon that you have with the Demon Hunter. Mm. Um, from what we know loosely is that the Demon Hunter does have a skill called Companion. We don't know exactly what it does or how permanent it is, but there is a skill based <laughs> upon that. Your Companion's going nuts right now, so with yeah. that, I think we're going to... Wait, 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 don't up. wrap it up. I want to okay. toss this in there. There's also a scroll of Companion, mm. and I haven't gotten a chance to see what it did, but the point is that you can summon a Companion via a scroll. Yeah, great. Awesome. Glad we got these questions answered. Glad we had another fantastic podcast. Thank you guys, as always, so much for listening. Uh, for Tyler, his companion, Kevin. No, not Tyler's I'm companion, after the Kevin. Dog. But Ty- <laughs> Tyler's <laughs> companion. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, yeah, it's been Dennis. Uh, thanks for listening. This is a botched exit, but we're going to roll with it. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. <laughs> Take it easy, guys. See you guys later. I love how, like, that person was flaming you because you're not fucking ignorant. This guy's not an idiot. I don't like him. Forces podcast sucks because he ain't <laughs> stupid. He don't complain about shit that he don't know about. <laughs> now, technically, shouldn't the only people who complain about the online only fact be people who can't complain about it online? I don't I don't or is like that just having, me? I, I sign on the interwebs to tell you guys I don't have any interwebs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they literally like if Bashok if Bashok took a fart they would put like a post about it. Bashok farted today. What does this mean? The blizzard's full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. Volume check. Looks good. Kevin typing needs to stop. My bad. The tip of the tongue. The tip of the tongue. Is that what you do? You don't know the tip of the tongue? Nope. Hmm. I thought you weren't broadcasting. Not really. It's just very, very, very <laughs> unprofessional. I do my my best to mask it as professional, but deep down. All right. <clears throat> Let's go in three, two.